Pity the bastards who lived in the eternal bastard present all their lives. Knew bulldoze boundaries and ancient names for fields by heart and had no names themselves apart from Christian names. Who cycled miles to mass in market towns the livestock saw more often than themselves and swayed up boreans, pristine in their Sunday best and pissed when the god of churches refused to let them do the hard work they were born to do. Pity the bastards who clamped book rabbits' heads between their legs and funneled putcheen into them until they booked, the blue sky shriveling in their pissed eyes, who swore blind that spirits sweetened the meat, bled them through their scraped out holes for eyes and tugged the fur off over skulls by pulling crew-necked knitted jumpers over children's heads. Pity the bastards who hunted free-range eggs in sheds and bore them back like promises or secrets in their flat caps, who worked for fags and died of lung complaints, cows withholding milk for days because they missed the rough familiar touch and singing in their flanks. Pity the bastards who tested suspect hay in sheds with bare arms slipped between the haunches of the bales and feeling like a vet buried to the armpit in a heifer, who grabbed at sops like the wet heels of a runt calf and pulled and felt the crop contract against the strain, clench against them, scull them and relax. Who did not need to be told twice if a scum had built that the crop would light if it was not dumped and torched that night, the way you dumped the runt to save the heifer. Who satisfied themselves with saving sheds some summers instead of hay. Pity the bastards who love to leave their yard boots on the loft stairs and stand to their ankles in the deep grain, taking to turning it and falling for the rhythm of the chore. The wheat trench dug and borne across the boards to break against one gable end and double back ad infinitum. The glint and dust and brunt of indoor work. When called for tea, was to be called back from the brink. The trance of being knee deep in it and rowing for their lives, of wheat waves breaking on the upstairs walls, who turned an ancient jumper inside out to break the trance and went down for their tea, who put on boots and felt like they had took off wings. Pity the bastards, who loved to stand out in a fine mist, to touch the damp warmth stored on the undersides of stones. Masters of the punchline and the soundbite. What would you do with the jawbone of an ass? The answer roared to scandalise the woman of the house. Kill thousands! Who kept the bill hook shone to keep the wounded made from going septic. Who hot-wired zephyrs, tampered with the diaphragms of chainsaws and spent so long on all fours snagging swedes and turnips. It often slipped their minds that they were men. Who owned no clothes except the clothes they wore. Were known for not being able to harm a fly and meant no harm when they grabbed the hand of a married brother's girl and rammed it down inside the waistband of a working pants where nature hardened like a pickaxe handle. Pity the bastards and the youngster sprinting from an outhouse in the dark her hand aloft like a torch to light the way, whose nipples pinched by an uncle stung for days under a blue school blouse, who knew to say nothing. Pity the bastards, landlocked all their lives, who took a rowboat out on a calm lake once and felt brute power flow into the oars, lungs igniting with the cold lake air, once or twice who caught the drift of it and got it right, whose bulk became all cut and thrust and heave, on whom the dip and drip of blades conferred a sense of having slipped into the stream of things, who strained and stroked and rowed till they were flat out, limbered up and numb, who came around and scrambled for the bank and learned the farther inland they could see, the farther out from land they went 
who abandoned oars at the boathouse door, stowed the craft on her stanchions, and felt it as a kind of grace when the hoisted shell assumed its given mass. Pity the bastards, who perfected the dead butt from the back wall, predicted the foul hop, kept a clear eye on the dropping ball, a cool head in defence, who swore by pesticides, believed in land, supported Man United all their lives, and suffered Munich as a personal disaster who took off Elvis in the local after closing and cried like children when he died, whose shit caked boots were as close as they ever came to blue suede shoes. Pity the bastards who voted for Europe in the local national schools where masters hammered 17 different colours of shit out of them on a regular basis and in the process educated them, who never got to grips with quotas because they loved churns who understood instinctively that milk likes peace and curdles it disturbs, so left it in the draught between two toys, who dipped their fingers in it to the wrist to coax an ailing weanling into drinking. Pity the bastards, whose winters made them good at lighting fires, who kicked Moroccan orange crates to bits for tinder, whose mothers were their sisters, and our fathers rogues, who lived in dread of county homes and dreamed of dying in their own beds, who loved the epic feat of memory and recollected all the presidents of the United States in order of incumbency, dates of the battles of Clontarf and Hastings, who treated cows at milking time to every line of a bunch of the boys were whooping it up at the Malamute saloon, emasculated cattle with a steel for did so, and took malicious pleasure in fingering the testicles expertly like devotees with shriveled leather purses for their beads, who remembered the headland of the field they were working in precisely when Kennedy got that high velocity bullet in the head and fantasized about what they'd like to do to Oswald. Pity the bastards who knew the knack with landing a good punch was to time it right, who karate shot rabbits to put them out of their misery, who smeared Swarfiga into injured skins and loved the stink of it, who were antichrist butchers when it came to roses, but thought a law protecting gentians sound. Pity the bastards who were stuck to the ground by a hard frost once like Gulliver's who spent their lifetimes travelling 16 acres extensively, who spoke no language, only English, and thought it lovely when the young ones picked up German. Pity the bastards, who cut crops from the centre out to give the corn crakes time to make a break, who dandled concertinas on their knees like babies and loved the only note the wind could play on the top of a gate because it had no fingers, who loved to sing put another nickel in the Nickelodeon and did not know what the words they were singing meant and cared less. Pity the bastards who slept in extra rooms they helped build, beds that smelled of fields and sheds, who vividly recalled the automatic telecom exchange when it was Carey's Forge, who sacrificed one lung to TB or the god of nicotine, who coughed until they coughed blood, who thought themselves lucky. Pity the bastards, who held an old bull's blood pumped head hard into their own chests for a whole day once and lived to tell the tale. Like lovers locked in a lover's long embrace, bull face to man face, the thick chain wound around their wrists, fed twice around their big man's bleeding fists, like the shiny bright umbilicus of some strange child they both delivered there, who wore the gouged out hollows of the bull's front legs like negatives of breasts, and never claimed they'd got the better of the beast, but missed him, when the sergeant stopped out with a captive bolt in a cardboard box and dropped the old stud at his manger on the spot, who prayed for the creature that had wanted them dead because it knew no better, and only said they'd smell the breath of death that reeked, they said, of meadowsweet, 
wild flowers, rampant, half digested grass. Pity the bastards, whose requiem masses were long, convoluted, concelebrated affairs, attended by kin who went into the church and wound up on the missions in Brazil. And pity them because they left behind them nothing and took their names. And if they played, could imitate a hurt plover or a baby whale by pressing a rusty latch key against the strings. Who heard the waves at evening breaking in the key of E. Who went into the lakes, the earth, the sea, holding stones inside their clothes like infants to their chests. Bristling into sheds with homemade ropes. Who took more jigs and reels and slow airs with them than a human could play in a lifetime to their graves.